and you want to enter the draft and you want to go pro, I think everyone on everyone's radar, wouldn't you agree, is national team? Yeah. I'm talking about pro. Um, and then I think just hearing feedback from coaches saying like, oh, maybe you could be with national team, I think is what kind of motivated me. Yeah, for me, like, I mean, it was the first year of the league and yeah, yeah. And how it all kind of started was like, do I go overseas and play? Do I stay mm. here? And I was like, I needed to be in the league if I wanted to make the national team, especially since the federation was helping with the allocation. Right, and like paying. visibility and yeah. stuff. Yeah. So it was like, as a rookie, I needed to be here. And um, there's my opportunity. Hopefully they pick me and, you know, going to be fighting for the spot. And I won the spot. And then it's just like, okay, keep pushing, keep pushing, because the way you play is what's going to dictate like if you get right. into the national team and stuff. So, um, yeah, that's that's a journey within itself. What year was it that we were in the U23s? Were you in Norway? Do you remember that? You came in, I think it might have been right after an injury, and we were together. I, I was like a freshman in yeah, college. That had to have been senior into rookie year. Into rookie year. It's kind of cool to be around top players in that age group oh, to yeah. then make us, I don't know, kind of see like, you know, oh, like she's good, she's good. Like how can I be better now? How can I be better mm -hmm. than that kind of kind of deal? And where it kind of ranges, like yeah. what, it, what, what does being good look like in this yeah. environment? And like, cause whatever environment you jump from like high school, yeah, you're, you got a scholarship and you're going, mm. they think you're good. You mm. walk in there and it's just like, boom, yeah. you're hit yeah. with like, oh, this is the next level. It's a little bit faster then you adapt and then, so on and so forth. The pros from college is a is a big step. Like, you know, think about being in college. It was like, oh, this is awesome. Like, we're so good. Mm. And then we look back and we're just like, were we Wait. good? <laughs> but like, it's Could just I the kick different. A ball with my left foot? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the different no. levels as you keep jumping. It's just like, the ones who make it adapt to it. Yeah. You know, it's wild to think of where we've come from there. I think the biggest challenge for me entering the draft and then being drafted to Portland. Um, not knowing much, but knowing that Portland was, you know, they're pretty good at soccer <laughs> and the, um, just the caliber of players that they had. You know, Ali Long was here, uh, Christine Sinclair, Tobin Heath, you know, Lindsay ends up coming um, from Discovery Player from overseas. Um, I think that same year you came. But being constantly called into camp for a year, maybe two years, and then going through a, uh, a time period where you're not called in, so about five or six months, and that time period where then I decided, oh, like, how how am I going to develop? Am I thinking too much about the next roster being named? You know, am I thinking too far in the future? Like, what can I do now? And I think that was the biggest that time frame of how how can I manage myself and like what's going to make me happy and what's going to set me up for success. Everyone would say it's not easy you know, being taken out of an environment that you think that you should be in, because it's the competitor that we, that's probably all inside, inside <laughs> of us. If you're not competitive, you should not be here. Um, and I think that's, that's probably my biggest sense. And like, that's the mental side. And then now how can I manage myself every single day instead of looking at the bigger picture or like that end goal? What mm -hmm. can I do every single day? And that's, yeah. Yeah, I mean, for me getting some calls in ever since, you know, like I think it was my senior year, 2012, or I was like 2013 or something like that. And man, all right, I got the call, awesome. Like this is the direction it's going. Mm. And then getting the blow for the ACL injury, you know, in uh, 2014, or yeah, 2014. So, and then 2015 was the World Cup. And I was just like, man, is that dream kind of gone? Like, is that? Has that passed for me? Um, still gonna keep trying for it, but you know, you, you have those questions in your mind and um, then coming back from overseas and I'm like, yeah, I'm back in Portland, let's go. And there was just like some back and forth with goalkeeping and then um, Michelle Betos, you know, ended up being the keeper for us. And um, that, that, was real, that was the season that was real tough for me in the mm -hmm. off season. And, um, I didn't surround myself with the people that um, would help set me up for success. That's what really had changed for me was that 2017 call-in for January camp where like 
I didn't come in fit at all. Like that off season, I, I was struggling with some things. I wasn't surrounding myself with people who helped me achieve, like put me in the direction. It kind of pulled me back a little bit. And, you know, I got told I wasn't going to be called in for at least a, a year until like mm. I kind of proved myself in a sense of like, look, you can either be a good pro keeper or you can eventually be like a world cup goalkeeper. And, um, you know, I had to make a decision then and I did. I kind of cut ties with some people and focused solely on the individual growth and, and even the mindset of it. Like, I read a couple different books to train the mental side of it and what that looks like. And not being called in for that, that year was hard. And even going into the um, 2018 year, I was like, okay, how, what is it going to look like now? But still have that end goal but have little goals to keep you on track to that goal. I think that's what I was missing before. It was just like looking at that end goal, looking at that end goal, like that's where I wanna go, but I don't know how to get, get there. there. Yeah. <laughs> so like you said, like kind of the day-to-day -day growing mindset. How can I get better today? How can I get better today? How can I help my team today? And so on and so forth. Like that's where my mentality went and it's been kind of successful within the I'd say, you know? I'd, I'd say it's worked. <laughs> I'd say it's worked. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> I think we'd both sit here and say that we're obviously not satisfied. Oh, no. I know. So <laughs> that's, that's like a hard, to not make it sound like cliche. And I, obviously, no, like not satisfied. Like where I am now, but I think it's so encouraging with the players that we have, just say here in the pro environment and like Portland Thorns, that I have people that are, are one, constantly encouraging me and telling me, you know, you, you are good, but they're there saying that, you know, this, there's still more. And I think you do a good job with this. And, and I think you lead by example. And I think we know we hear Mark, you know, it's probably annoying that he talks about it like as much as he does in <laughs> meetings. But I think the way that you've done it, you've led by example, how Sink has led by example, you know, she's whatever her fifth ninth World Cup and she's out there doing the best I've ever 20, seen 20, <laughs> 20 extra sprints and it's just like I think I've I'm I call it a, a happy accident being here in Portland and being surrounded by these players these world-class players that will constantly push my game and my development yeah it's exciting it's exciting to to think of like where we are as individual players and, and where we could go and our potential because I used to think like potential was like a cuss word, right? Because like it was, it was a bad word because you're not reaching it. You're not, you're not there. You haven't arrived because I mean, I heard it growing up, you're athletic, but you're technically not sound. Like you have so much potential and it was just what I heard constantly. And I, I didn't take that the right way. Like, Potential, I hope I continue to always have potential. I hope that it keeps growing because that means where I am right now, like I have to acknowledge that like I'm a good player, you know? Um, I'm a professional women's soccer goalkeeper, you know? Mm -hmm. Like that's pretty cool. Like the five-year-old self would be very proud and I, I I went to, What's up? Yeah, like, hey, can I, can I, I, know can I shake your hand? I know can I, her. <laughs> You know, like, that's, that's something that's pretty incredible, you know, to think that you've been working so many years to get to this point and, and you still have goals ahead, but we have to acknowledge what we've achieved so far. So I think there's that balance of giving yourself a pat on the back, but yeah, your job's not done yet, right. you know? And because there's so much more that you can achieve and what you're talking about with the players that we're surrounded with and like Sink and Tobin and the way that they, they train every day, that's, that, that's what it is. I mean, Tobin, what, received the Player of the Year award and like she's still grinding, she still wants more, she still wants to develop, she's still learning and that's gonna happen throughout the entire, your entire career. And once that starts to fall the other direction, maybe it's time to hang up the cleats. But right. until then, like <laughs> keep 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 climbing for the you know not a ceiling, but like the sky, the universe, right. whatever you know. Like it's it's pretty exciting. 